Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's grade 11 functions class. This is 7.3 and 7.4. The rules to define unusual sequences and recursive formulas for some of the more unique recursive formulas that we need. So um, by unusual, we really mean things that are not arithmetic or geometric, but we do mean that they can be defined uh, mathematically. So let's just dive right in. Um, example A, given the sequence 1, 8, 16, 26, 39, 56, 78, determine the next three terms. So the quickest way to really get started is to try the differences. So we're going to do the differences here. I'm just going to write it out again so I have more space. And uh, I want three terms, so I don't have to worry about finding the general formula or the recursive formula. Um, I can just, uh, you know, go for it. So let's find the first differences. I actually found these uh, on my own before, so <laughs> I'm just going to write them in. Uh, 8 minus 1 is 7, 16 minus 8 is 8, so remember you're going sort of this way, right? So 26 minus 16, 39 minus 26. 56 minus 39, and 78 minus 56. So the first differences are not the same, and they're not very useful, but I'm going to continue on. Um, so seven minus, uh, sorry, 8 minus 7 is 1, 10 minus 8, 2, 13 minus 10 is 3, 17 minus 13, 4, 22 minus 17, Five. Now this is really useful because I have one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'm going to use this and I'm going to build upwards to get back to these three terms that I'm looking for. So in order to do that, I'm just going to continue my chart. Uh, I'm going to choose red. And I want to do the first differences right here and I'm going to do the second differences right here like this. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8. To find this one, I'm going to do 22 plus 6, that's 28. 28 plus 7, 35. And 35 plus 8 gives me 43. And now I can find the, the actual answer. So 78 plus 28 gives us uh, 106. 106 plus 35, 141. And 141 plus 43 gives us 184. And there we have our answers. Okay, so finding the first differences does actually really help. For example, B. Now, this is in fractional form, so it's really tempting to treat it as a decimal. So 3 over 4 is 0 0.75, 5 over 9 is 0 0.55, repeating, and so forth. Uh, but actually, if it's, a if it's a fraction, it might actually have a different definition for the top than for the bottom. And I can see in this case, 3, 5, 7, 9 is a sequence, and 4, 9, 16, 25 is a sequence. So I'm going to treat them separately. Um, so let's talk about the numerators first. Uh, the numerators are 3, 5, 7, 9. So I can see that this is an arithmetic sequence, and I already know the general term for arithmetic sequences. So um, that makes it kind of easy for this one. T sub n is equal to a plus d times n minus 1, right? So in this case, a is 3 and d is 2. Uh, and if I simplify that, I'm going to get 2n plus 1. So that's pretty good. Um, and now I can do the num uh, the denominator, sorry. So the denominators are 4, 9, 16, and 25, and so forth. Um, and if you like, you could write that out. That's 2 squared, 3 squared, uh, 4 squared, 5 squared, right? And again, if this helps, but you don't have to do this, um, you can think about what the n is now. So this is the first term, so that makes this n1. This is the second term, so that's 2. The third term, so that's 3. And the fourth term, so 4, right? So this is term term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. Um, and so now we can see how n is related to these numbers here. Um, and I know I want to find the general term for it because I found the general term in terms of n uh, for the numerator. So I'm not going to use a recursive formula for the denominator. That doesn't make sense to do different things for the numerator and the denominator. So um, that is why I'm going to do that. So I can see that this is actually n plus 1 squared, right? Because it's not quite n, but it's actually 
adding 1 every single time. So now I have my general formula for the denominators as well. So that gives me the general term for the entire sequence because I just have the numerator over the denominator. So the general sequence, our general term for the whole sequence is 2n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared. And that's how you do it. So you can separate it into two different parts. Okay, so example C, given this sequence, 5, 14, 41, 122, etc., determine the recursive formula. So we can have a really unusual sequence and it be defined by a recursive formula instead of the general term, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm still going to try to find the first differences and see if that will help me out. So if you do the first differences, and I did this on my calculator before, so um, you know that's a pretty easy step. Um, takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Um, so 729, 2187. I can see that my first differences are actually powers of 3. Um, and that's actually a really important thing to notice because um, if I continue doing differences, I'm going to get small numbers here and really big numbers over here. And that's going to continue on forever. So um, that's not going to help me to find the actual formula. But if they are powers, that actually tells me I should look at the first differences. So I'm going to write that down. The or sorry, I should look at the first ratios. So if the first differences are powers, we should look at the first ratios. Try should, sorry, <laughs> try looking at the first ratios. The first ratios. Trying to uh, do two things at once, not doing not doing too well. Okay, so if the first differences are powers, then we want to look at the first ratio. So I'm going to rewrite the um, sequence again, and I'll just give myself some space to write those first ratios. And we do it in the same way, so you do the second one mi divided by the first one instead of subtracting. And um, I actually did this on my calculator before, so I already know the answers. Uh, 14 divided by 5 is 2.8. 41 divided by 14, 2.929. Um, this one is 2.976. This one is 2.991. And if you run out of space, you can just make a super big V so that it's clear which ones are which, because um, you don't want to get them all stuck together because there's so many numbers. Okay, so you can see that as we go up, we are actually getting really close to 3. So we're going to pretend that the first ratios are actually 3 and try seeing what happens with that because um, this is powers of 3 and these are really close to 3 so we know that something's fishy. It's like a geometric sequence but it, you know, messed, messed around a little bit. So if we start with 5 and we multiply by 3, um, we actually get 15. Um, if we go with 14 and multiply by 3, we're actually going to get 42. Um, 41 times 3, this is the original sequence by the way that I'm doing, um, is equal to 123. Uh, 40, uh, sorry. Uh, 122, which is the next one, times 3 is equal to 366. And so we can actually see a relationship between the original sequence and the multiples of 3, because um, we have 5, 14, 41, 122, and here we have 15, 42, 123, 366. And if I continued, you'd actually get uh, plus one of these as well. So if I just subtract one, then that's going to give me the sequence I want, right? Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> and so um, that tells me that my recursive formula is actually going to involve a times 3 and a minus 1. So remember when you do a recursive formula, you do need to define the first term. It is 5. And then we're going to define the general term uh, by the previous term, right? So t uh, n minus 1 times 3 minus 1 because that's what we found as our operation, and that is our answer. 
So we're going to talk about some more recursive formulas right now. Um, we have two really famous recursive sequences. You've probably heard of Fibonacci before. It happens a lot in nature. Um, and there's also the Lucas sequence, which is actually also a really useful sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence works like this. It has 1 and 1 defined. And then if you do 1 plus 1, that's 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is the next term, 5. 3 plus 5, 8. 5 plus 8 is 13, and so forth. So we're actually just adding the two previous terms to get the next term. And the Lucas sequence works in exactly the same way. So 1 and 3 are defined, and then you just add them together to get 4. 4 plus 7, uh, sorry, 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 7, 11. Uh, 7 plus 11, 18. 11 plus 18, 29, and you get the picture. Okay, so if you like, you could pause the video and try to figure out the general formula, uh, the recursive formula for Fibonacci and Lucas. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, so for, for Fibonacci, we actually need to, oops, I spelled that wrong, sorry. <laughs> uh, we actually need to define the first two terms before we can start the sequence. T sub 1 is equal to 1 and t sub 2 is equal to 1. And to find every other term after that, we're going to add these two terms together, or the previous two terms together. So the term right before n is t sub n minus 1, and the one right before that is t sub n minus 2. So that is how you find it. Lucas is almost exactly the same, but term 2 is different. So we write term 1 is 1, term 2 is 3, and all successive uh, terms are going to be the term, two terms before it added together. And that is all you need to do. Um, so I'm actually going to give you another worksheet to do in class with another famous sequence. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon. Bye!